Hi, good morning, classmates. As part of the conducting polymer project, today we are going to show you how to make a conducting rubber. We know some polymers, like natural rubber and the elastomers, offer excellent elasticity uh, and can be used in a widely of applications. For example, the rubber band or the gloves. However, most of them are actually insulating materials. So, in order to, to make the polymers conducting, we have to add some conducting feeders into the system, like graphite. Graphite is highly conducting because it has a lot of delocalized electrons. It's pretty like the conducting polymers. Those pi pi conjugated electrons can move freely between the carbon atoms within the layer of structures. This is a rubber which we are going to use. It has a brand name called Breton. Okay, now we have put both graphite and the rubber pellets into a container which is made of LDPE. Now we are going to add a solvent. After one day, as you can see, the rubber pellets have been well dissolved in GHF. However, the graphite pellets, the graphite powder are not well dispersed. They form large chunks. So in order to disperse the graphite in the THF solution well, we have to use a speed mixer. This is a speed mixer. We are going to put the container of THF into this plastic holder. Now we are going to start the mixing. Now, after leaving the rubber graphite composite in hood for overnight to dry out the solvent, we get this kind of jelly-like composite. Now what we are going to do is to use hot press to make this kind of composite into certain shapes so we can use it in real applications. This is mold we are going to use. We fill the hole with the pellet of the rubber composite. Now we put the whole thing into a hot press. The hot press has been preheated to 130 degrees. After hot pressing, this is what we have got. Now I'm going to cut uh, cut out the leftover. And this is a sample that we have got. Now we have used hot press to make the sample bars. Here are three sample bars. The first is intrinsic rubber the second is what we add 5 weight of percent of graphite into the rubber. The third one is we add 10% of graphite into the rubber. As we know, intrinsic rubber are highly insulating. Now we are going to test it. As we can see, the resistivity of this rubber bar is above its the maximum value of the equipment. Now we'll see, by adding 5 weight of graphite into the rubber, its resistance will decrease. Now, its resistance can be measured with our equipment. Its resistance is 0.1 mig ohm. By further adding more graphite into the rubber, we're supposed to see its conducting is further increasing. Now its resistance is only 100 ohm, which is much smaller than the 5 weight percent sample. So, 
So why as we increase in the graphite content, the resistance of the sample bar width will sharply decrease? It's because there is a 3D graphite network forming. Here we can uh, think about a percolating network formulation in which graphite particles are now geometrically connecting, forming a 3D network as we increase its content in the matrix. This would result in a major increase in the conductivity. This is a, a conducting rubber bar which can take 5% five five of graphite. As we can see, if we don't apply any force to it, its resistance is about 14 kilo ohm. Now we are going to apply some force into it. We can see its resistance largely increase. So how does our stress sensor work? Now I'm going to show you that with some easy technique. This is a rubber band. I have stick two rare stickers onto it. Now you can see before stretching they are connecting. But now if I'm going to stretch the rubber band, the two stickers are getting separated. This is just like what happening in our conducting rubber composite. Originally two graphite particles are touching each other. However, am I, am I, if I'm going to stretch them, they're going to separate and the system turns into insulating. 